An operational amplifier, referred to as op amp is a voltage amplifier having differential inputs. Amplifiers are made of transistors, resistors, and a few capacitors. An op amp is symbolized by a three-terminal triangular block. It has two inputs, positive and negative input terminals, and one output. Generally the input resistance of an amplifier R in, is large. Ideally no current flows through the input terminals of an amplifier. An amplifier amplifies its input, the difference between its positive and negative terminals, by its open loop gain G, and presents it at its output terminal. The open loop gain of an ideal amplifier is infinite. The voltage transfer characteristics of an amplifier consists of negative saturation, positive saturation, and linear regions. Note that an amplifier is an active component and its output cannot exceed the supply voltages. Since the output of an amplifier is much larger than the voltage at its input terminals, small input levels can saturate it. The linear region lies between the two saturation regions. In this region the output equals the input multiplied by the open loop gain. An amplifier with an open loop gain of 100,000, positive and negative 5 volts supply voltages, having a 1 volt triangular signal at its positive input, with its negative input connected to ground, outputs a signal that looks like a square wave. In this configuration, the amplifier acts like a comparator. A mere 50 microvolt signal level saturates the op amp. In practice, the saturation voltages are below the voltage supply levels. In our example, if we reverse the connection to the input terminals, the output would be inverted. Commonly, amplifiers are used in inverting and non-inverting closed loop configurations. Usually a resistor is used to close the loop. To find the output in a closed loop configuration, we recall two main guidelines, the voltages on the negative and positive input terminals are the same, and the input currents through these terminals are essentially zero. This circuit shows a common inverting amplifier. Note that the input currents of the amplifier is zero, and the voltage potential of both terminals are the same and equal zero volts. We can simplify the circuit and solve for the current through R in. This current must flow through RF, therefore the output of the inverting amplifier becomes the ratio of minus RF over R in, multiplied by V in. In non-inverting configuration, the input is connected to the positive terminal of the amplifier. Recalling that the inverting terminal must be at the same voltage level simplifies the circuit to a resistor divider. The current through RF and therefore the output can easily be calculated. The output becomes the product of 1 added to the ratio of RF over R in, and V in. These equations provide the relationship between the output and the input of an amplifier. Consider the inverting and non-inverting buffers, used to isolate the output load from the input. By placing the resistor values in the corresponding equations, we can find the output voltages. Equations for other feedback configuration can also be derived based on the principles described earlier. This circuit can test our basic knowledge of operational amplifiers. Known as T-bridge feedback, this configuration is commonly used to eliminate the use of large feedback resistors. To solve for the output, we follow the signal and the current from the input to the output. Using reasonable values for resistors, this circuit provides a high gain, which otherwise is only attainable with a bigger than 1 megaohms resistor in the feedback path. In this setup one signal is subtracted from another. We have been defining DC voltages to this point. The transfer function of an amplifier follows the guidelines presented here regardless of its feedback configuration and the input signal type. Using an analog ARTS SF880, we can observe the output of the amplifier for a sine and a triangle signal. A question that was asked from one of our viewers in an interview can serve as another test. The problem is to find the VX and VY in this circuit. Applying the principles presented in this tutorial, we now should be able to easily calculate the output voltages. Thank you for watching.